is a thousand points of light. Now you know what George Bush and some of these others are referring to cryptically when they say a thousand points of light. And down in the secret basement of this castle, hidden down there on a daily basis, they take a pregnant woman and they sacrifice her and they take the baby and they sacrifice it and drain the innocent blood from the baby and use that as ink to write in this great white book the deeds that were accomplished that day in bringing in Satan's reign of the Antichrist. <clears throat> now you'll notice it, it, perhaps that right here the Abbey du Orval that is a very significant abbey for the Merovingian dynasty and it's only about four or five miles uh, from the castle and it was in this area that King Dagobert of the Merovingians was, uh, was assassinated. We'll see a skull later. The Illuminati adepts learn they do path working of the Kabbalah. They also go through different occult sciences last one being uh, vampirism which is called the Holy Grail and this is why uh, you will see these top Illuminati men addicted to blood uh, when someone is being sacrificed ladies and gentlemen which is a very horrible thing the person is terrified and adrenaline is pumped into their body <clears throat> when you drink that blood you get the high, the adrenaline high that that person was in. And you, after a while, become addicted to that adrenaline high. There's also a very top secret. This substance, it's called adrenal chrome, and the, just the very existence of it's been kept very secret by these people. If you time things just perfectly right, as the person is being sacrificed, you can stick a needle here at the base of the skull, and if you know what you, you're doing and the timing is correct, you can extract adrenal chrome, which is a very valuable drug, natural drug, on the Illuminati's black market. <coughs> this is why <coughs> uh, you will see that, uh, <coughs> well, backtracking just a little bit, the establishment news media said that the reason why Al Gore carried blood in a suitcase was that he was a hemophiliac. But the truth of the matter is that he's become addicted to blood. <clears throat> and now we're going to uh, discuss very briefly with you. I can get my pen. Point. We're going to discuss very briefly with you the uh, basic policy process within the United States. Of course, as you can see, it's not what the people think it is. We're going to go through this very quickly. This is worthy of maybe a few books. Here at the top, on the international level, on the top satanic levels, decisions are being made. Those decisions are being passed down to <clears throat> the national level. If you go back in the occult world, you'll read uh, a man named Plato, and he talks about the wise men ruling. That occult concept was passed on down, and you'll read in Francis Bacon's book, The New Atlantis, which originally had a title with the words, uh, a word of Rosicrucian, that they wanted to create a group of wise men to rule in the new world and that concept has indeed been implemented. <clears throat> that study group or wise men group is called Majesty 12 and it's been given a lot of code names. They just sometimes just seem to happen to meet each other and originally it was set up six men from the executive committee of the Jason Society, six men of the executive committee of the Jason Group, and six men of other key positions along with the chairman. And I believe in Reagan's administration, they upped the number to 40. And this group, on their classified pap papers, has the word magic, M-A-J-I-C, stamped on it. 
but they can't make all the decisions. So they pass some of the decisions on to the policy planning groups, which I've listed over here, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Brookings Institute, the Business Roundtable, the American Enterprise Institute, the Population Council, Resources for the Future, and the Urban Institute. But those people can't make all the decisions, so they pass them on down the line, some of them on down the line, to the research policy planning groups, such as the RAND Corporation, the Stanford Research Institute, and the Hudson Institute. Now, how does this work in actuality? Let's say the Illuminati have made a decision as to something they want to implement. They'll get somebody, say the president does announce, we have a problem. Then they, the president will say, we have a problem. We need to initiate a government study of this problem. And then they will pour millions of dollars into a government study and maybe after 10 years come up with a large number of findings that are pr printed in these thick books that even researchers like myself don't wade through. And the bottom line is the decision that they had decided upon long ago. And then they get their opinion makers, government councils, national uh, and news medias, and intelligence agencies to help them out to make it appear like there's grassroots support at different levels. And so the legislators say, we had this problem, we did this study, this is the best advice, and they pass a law. Now, if they have any problems along the way, they have their covert enforcers, like the mafia and the IRS and FBI and ADL, to smooth out the opposition. <coughs> Hidden behind the scenes, the Illuminati have created occult area boards in all the areas. Of course, you got your four regions with 13 states each, and then within each of those, you've got a small section that's uh, given an occult area board, all your different groups working within a given area. If they're working, collaborating with the Illuminati, will send participants or representatives. So as an example of how this works, your own cult in Japan, the Illuminati uh, area board over there uh, decided, let's build up the own cult. They pull recruit, or they pull people from other cults into the own, own cult to build it up. <coughs> then when they wanted to make regional government for the United States, what pattern did they follow? Their area boards. <coughs> There's a twilight world of the interconnections between organized crime and the Illuminati. As you'll notice, some of the Mishpuka and the Triad and the Mafia and the P2 Freemason families are, are tied in blood-wise, family-wise, with the Illuminati. But the whole thing is one slimy mess that interconnects. And this one I won't show, but it's, uh, it, it's just on the Illuminati control of health care. We don't have time to go into that. I'll let you glance at this uh, next one here for a minute. Uh, I knew I was going to be coming to the Midwest, and I knew that there were a lot of uh, good farm people. And uh, I have a monograph that explains this particular um, uh, transparency in case you want more information. And you can get this through Prophecy Club. This is Illuminati and mob control of Hollywood. And of course, you'll notice that very important part of that was Music Corporation of America, who got sweetheart deals from these groups here. They go through and look at who's in charge of things. You'll find lots of Illuminati names. And this is Federal Reserve. And you'll notice very nice, uh, and nice, that's not a nice word to use here. But at any rate, you'll notice Illuminati names, Rockefeller, Russell, Peabody, Reynolds, Warburg, Pine, Morgan, as original stockholders of the Federal Reserve. This was in my book, Be Wise as Serpents. And I went into detail about how these different components control Christianity. For instance, I went denomination by denomination 
and gave high-ranking Freemasons who were important clergymen in these denominations. For instance, for the Episcopal Church, this was uh, the list of Freemasons within the Episcopal Church. And here is an example of how Christians are using a Masonic Lodge as a church. Joseph Smith, Jr. created Mormonism. Here are some of his magic amulets that he used. Here's his serpent staff that he used. Here's his ritual athema that he used. Joseph Smith, Jr. came from an important occult bloodline. All of the leaders of the RLDS Church and the LDS Church have been members of the same bloodline. They go back to the tribe of Dan and, and uh, the Merovingians, and uh, I believe that Gordon P. Uh, B. Hinckley, who is now leader of the LDS Church, goes back to the Merovingians via Nathaniel uh, Hinckley, uh, who's tied back into the Plantagenet family. And uh, here's some more. This is a green seer stone of Joseph Smith, Jr. and some of his magic parchment. And his successor of the main group, uh, Brigham Young, here is his Masonic pen. And that's Dagward Skull, and that was one of the leaders of the uh, Merovingian Priory of Zion. Now, the man who started the Jehovah's Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell, was a Knights Templar Freemason. And as you can read here, Charles Taze Russell, ritually murdered by the Illuminati on Halloween, has his ashes protected below a pink granite pyramid made from the sacred enchanted rock mountain at a sacred site 18 miles north of Fredericksburg, Texas. The pyramid is in a cemetery in what was Allegheny, Pennsylvania, now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Real quickly, here are some actual members of the Illuminati from these various bloodlines. John Jacob Astor, for instance, within a matter of a few years, had a monopoly on the entire fur trade. And if you stop to think about it, the fur trade had been going on for centuries before he arrived. And here's some... Uh, Illuminati from the DuPont family. The DuPonts are um, key people in the military industrial complex. Every day, each one of us cannot escape using something made from chemical products that the DuPonts are involved with. They also have been major manufacturers of American gunpowder for our different wars. And this is the Freeman Illuminati family. Gaylord Freeman in charge of the Priory of Zion for a while and he was advisor to two presidents, so was Roger A. Freeman, and here's one of the Freeman in the skull and bones. And this is the Kennedys, JFK's sister married into British royalty. Joseph Kennedy once remarked on one of the marriages that didn't go through, if my daughter had married, my son-in-law would have been the head of all Freemasons. And here's JFK making his pilgrimage to the pyramids, just like Grant made a pilgrim, Ulysses Grant made a pilgrimage to the pyramids, and so did uh, Charles Taze Russell and many of the others. This is what we're going to discuss about uh, in depth. Uh, this woman here, Marilyn Monroe, was the first. Uh, presidential sex model slave that they allowed the public to see. I believe in these pictures here, we're watching her switch personalities. James Manfield, who was under mind control, uh, she was a um, one of uh, JFK's girlfriends, and she's a member of LaVey's Church of Satan, and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. was also under LaVey's control and member of a Church of Satan and also a good friend of JFK. Here's Lee ka uh, Illuminati billionaire in Hong Kong who has quite a bit of things in 
uh, Canada. And here is Winthrop Rockefeller. He supplied money to finance Clinton. He is reported to have the world's largest porn collection. And here's Guy de Rothschild, who uh, in, in French we might say Gita, and I believe that this man is, is uh, 